Very good morning, guys. Very good morning. Uh, welcome back to this program um, of the DevOps track, I can say, or uh, plus the Git also, right? So last two days, around uh, almost eight hours, we have discussed multiple core thing about uh, Git, or I can say GitHub, right? That was just a core. I'm not saying basic, but it's a core because the way I explain to you how uh, Git work behind the scene, what is the meaning of the working area, what is the meaning of the staging area and the commit area, right? And the interesting thing is I explain you the core idea behind it, right? The way they take the snapshots, they, the way they keep on doing commits just to maintaining the versioning so we can control the versions, right? or uh, so that we can also track because as a as a mostly this tool is mostly used by the developers right and when i say developers it doesn't mean the pure software developers right of c plus plus or java language or scala language nowadays whichever the domain you go right uh, we have to write the code maybe you are from the it admin background right uh, you have to write a shell scripting or some kind of scripting, or maybe you are from the DevOps world, right? From Kubernetes to Ansible, almost everywhere we have to write some kind of code in certain uh, language. They might be markup language, but certain code we have. So, because today we are moving towards the uh, toward the automation, right? This is one of the key idea behind DevOps. Okay, so in the automation world, the things that it can only be automated uh, only if if you can write the things into the code because without the code, thing won't be automated. This is a very simple statement. Okay, now the interesting point over here is uh, is it means whatever you want to achieve, you have to write the code, and whenever you write the code, it look like you are a developer. And it's when you, when it look like you are the developer. So the idea of the code is you write something, uh, then you implement, then you write something, then implement something what you have already written in the code. Um, that portion you might have changed, some bug come up, some some security loophole come up, some new features come up. So it is a uh, it is like a, a lifelong or if you talk about the life cycle, I can say of the software development it will be like a infinity right it's uh, till the time your project goes or till the time uh, your company goes right you have to keep on changing and updating things in your code in your program in your software whatever you say here okay but but we don't know what are changes we do it will crash my system we don't know okay or what are changes we do uh, in the future maybe my client doesn't like that change uh, to whom you are writing the code for right so you might have to come back this called roll back okay so those things you can you can do very easily if you have a somebody who track you okay then today you have done this tomorrow you are going to do this or maybe last two days or three days back uh, this is what the activity uh, you guys have done, right? So if you don't have any tracking system, right? Uh, it is very harder or I can say is impossible to go back. Okay, it's not like there was just some limited lines of code you are writing. It is like uh, huge code of hundreds of pages connect together. Every page has thousands, thousands of lines you're going to write. Multiple teams also working, right? So you also need some tool where you can manage your source code. Okay, so management of your source code in XYZ language, whatever guys language you know from Go to Ruby to Perl, Python, or to any other DevOps engine language or maybe markup languages. So you should know how to manage your code, especially in the team, how you guys can work together, collaborate, and work together, right? This is also one, one big area. So this call that that is a reason uh, this area is known as SCM source code management. How you're going to manage your code? When I say management, it come it takes everything in management. It is version control systems also come up. How the team guys 
work together and some more thing also come up right so today okay saturday and tomorrow sunday again we have a uh, we are just in the mid of this training so but in this around 8 hours this this class is to be very advanced lots of advanced uh, topics we are going to discuss we are going to talk about multiple merge strategies uh, strategy uh, merge conflict in different way squashing is very powerful thing Re, uh, ref log uh, we have to use a lot research different kind of research we have hard soft and next uh, we are going to discuss stash is one powerful concept cherry picking is one concept um, and much more okay amend if you want to do something like this so like like this or in a github perspective how different different kind of uh, thinking or uh, my, my main point here is is there some options in the github uh, if I take those options and the, the topics that I'm talking about right now, uh, maybe I it takes half an hour to show you all those command, all the options, for example, a squash option or, or re, rebase option. Okay, so very quickly I can show you the commands and the output. But the interesting thing is in the Git is every options or the strategy has been solving is solving some kind of use cases okay so if you don't understand what is the challenges we are facing in some particular area or some particular scenario if you don't understand that particular use case then then only we can implement uh, you know we can take a particular command of the gate and take particular strategy of the gate what Git is offering so my point here is we are going more deep more advanced and trying to take almost all the main and major use cases uh, or challenges what normally we face or you guys are facing or you will face in the future and how we can resolve those challenges and what kind of strategy or what kind of uh, tooling from the get we are going to use right so that might be one of the reasons why it takes eight hours for me uh, to along, around eight hours for me now from now uh, to to show you this entire uh, further topics, right? So whatever guys we have in the agenda, we are going to cover the remaining portion. Plus whatever the, I have some more uh, concept that might not be there in the agenda, but we also cover uh, those, those things also, right? So I think very clear, uh, but as we progress in this course, you guys uh, come to know. So without wasting further time, what I'm going to do, I am going to, uh, let me share my screen first. Okay, one minute, one minute. So what I'm doing uh, right now, uh, because I, I'll quickly revise some of the very common, uh, things what we have done in the last class right in a very different way i'm going to introduce guys one very very beautiful tool uh, to just that that tool is very fantastic for learning the get in the better way okay by some kind of visuals they give, they give you some visuals and they show you what is happening uh, behind the scene right and uh, that's that's the one thing so I'm just also going to introduce this tool to you. It's a good way to debug if something is not working, if you if you fail to understand uh, why uh, why thing is not working the way we want. Plus, it also give a visuals that help to understand the tool very uh, and the concept in very better in in more better way. So uh, so let's let let's introduce this tool before before this tool. Very quickly, I want to. Uh, summarize one small thing okay the thing is uh, wherever you guys work always we work in a file in a file we write a code and this is the file or multi files we put in a folder that folder is called working space or workspace it's also known as a work area or working area okay now if you think you want to take a copy of this work till now Okay, that you guys know is called snapshot and here technically is known as I want to 
commit and whenever you commit, they give some area space to that data, whatever you're committing that point in time. Commit is like a copy of something that, that point in time, it's for point in time backup concept, I will explain to you. And that those time they give a ID is called commit ID. So this is called commit area, but the, the concept is you can't put the data directly on the commit area. You have to first put those data or those file in the staging area. When I say we have to put, it doesn't mean you have to copy the data here. Uh, putting the thing in the staging uh, area means we are just informed or to the staging area that we have some multiple files or multiple lines of code. I want to put those things, their information over here. That this 10 file I want to put in you and those 10 files, these are the data uh, I want to put on you means I just want to take this information, take this reference, this that is called metadata. So in the future, whenever you commit all data in the staging area, we can copy here. Or all the information of the staging area that is typically known as a reference. Okay, the maintain and guys, you you guys know whenever you want to store any information, for example, book might have book of thousand pages, right? But but every pages have some data, some information, but you want to store the entire book information. The initial page of the book is enough, right? So in the initial page, what you see, the, you see the TOC content, table content, right? And in the, in the table content, uh, we write uh, chapter number one, this is the data you will find. Chapter number two, this is the data you will find. So, so my point over here, over here is, this the first page is normally known as, known as index page and what this index page contain only the information about what you have in this book where you find which page you find what chapter what chapter name so they they put some summary that summary or that page or of your book of any book i can say uh, is also known as uh, index so typically staging area is work like an index they know the reference. Reference means they know in the working area where this file located, what is the file name, okay? Which lines of the file has been changed? What is the location of those lines? So they maintain this, uh, this information that's called index, okay? And how they're maintaining with the help of referencing of the console. So anybody who know about um, any programming language, they, they might know, you know, reference uh, concept normally be used in the functions, right? If you know, otherwise there's no technical requirement to know here. So these information behind the scene guys store in the staging area. So just guys, I was trying to summarize what we have done in the last class, right? But when we are working on Git, you don't might don't know, might not require some time to know all those stuff, right? But it's good to know if you know what is happening and what the use of what area. So something feel, and you have to troubleshoot and in troubleshooting perspective, if you know much more deep, better your, you would be troubleshoot the issues if you face. And normally we will face multiple, multiple issues time to time. Okay, this is one thing. Now, second thing is whenever you commit, this is the first commit created and I am also using one more term. So instead I say commit, first commit created, let me use the term has one, first commit created or, <laughs> or it is also known as version. So version one created, whatever name you want to give, you can give. And this commit is what? It's just like a snapshot, like just like a backup of that point in time. Okay, of that point in time. This is what uh, they do. One more guys, please. Guys, I believe my uh, screen is not properly visible. That my team give feedback to me. I'm again resharing my screen. If you guys can help me out. Now does this is coming uh, clean is okay, right? So my screen is entire visible, right? Yes, okay, thank you very much. So uh, this is one commit area. Then you commit one more time, you tell, do more changes in your working area. Again, you put in the staging area and then you commit one more time. I guess I'm very excited for today's class. <laughs> I'm just quickly revising this point so that you can reference back and you can connect uh, those pieces what we have done in the last classes in the today's class. So I'm doing a little faster, comparatively, I can say, 
uh, what we discussed in the last class. So I can jump very quickly on and today in, in today's topic. So this commit uh, to, and let's say this is the version two we have created. Whatever the change we have this point in time, is go point in time back up, we store here. And let's say, let me write one more time. We have one more commit we created. Let's say the commit number, number three, let's say this is version three we created. But this entire, you can say this is one kind of timeline, timeline, or this entire timeline, right, is stored in one, uh, or I can say this this entire timeline we can give a name right to man, to for the management per perspective and this timeline we can give let's say the name called master or instead we normally use the word timeline here we normally use the word called branch so I can say in this branch what are the name would be master or developer one or your name right in this branch we have done three time commit at this point in time and who have done this we also maintain the author name and other things also. <clears throat> okay and why uh, we uh, need a branch or timeline that what i guess explained in my last class a multiple branch we create that could feature branch to to add some more things and something like this so something we have discussed in my last class but we have more we go more deep into the branching topic and the merging topic so this one branch but the very important point guys to to uh, note here that's why i again explain this 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 concept very quickly here is uh, whenever you create a branch okay without branching it is impossible to commit means every commit is stored in your branch whatever name would be master or or dev one branch or whatever you say but the important point is okay Whenever you commit, okay, when you commit, the last commit, uh, we maintain this information in one uh, special variable that's called head variable. So what are the last commit would be head is a special kind of a tag, I can say, even, even though I can say reference or uh, that, that no, or this variable no, that uh, commit number three or whatever their, their complete ID is the one who, who is the last commit okay why is very important to know because because whenever you you uh right now guys you are into git because the, the concept i'm going to explain you just uh, try to understand very clearly very important concept okay right now you want to get maybe you're working on your local system in a git local git okay and your plan is to sync your data on the cloud, let's say in the GitHub, in the GitHub. And what do you want to do? This data you want to send over the cloud or over the internet in the GitHub to store there, right? In their repository. So when you want to send this data, that time you have to write a command called git push command. Rewards guys, we have discussed in the last class, right? And with the git push command, uh, you, you say, in, in this master, but even though guys in git push command, you also write one more keyword called master, which branch you want to upload and where you want to upload. So in the GitHub, you have created on your own repository. Okay. This repository have their own URL, unique path. Okay. So while doing git push, you all, all also say this is the repository. This is the information I given in my local system. Let's say with the name called origin. So I would have to push my data to the get origin so what is origin this is one just a term i explained you again in my last class so so in your local system you first have to update this your local system whenever i do push anything i am going to give the url of my github and this url information i store in one variable called origin or you can give other variable name also okay you just update this information once uh, normally in your local system with the git remote command and uh, then, then in the future you can keep on using git push by this name to upload but this command you guys know so when i run this command okay what happened your local data will upload to git hub that's what we have discussed in the and seen also in the last class but the interesting thing is in this command when you're using git push command you mention your branch name or your timeline 
So whatever branch name you mention, that particular branch will upload in the GitHub. You might have multiple branch, but only that particular branch will upload. And when I, when I say branch, branch means your uh, branch means your timeline. And what timeline contain? Commit one, commit two, and commit three. But the important point here is to notice this. So when you upload, uh, upload into the GitHub, you commit one, with v1 v2 and v3 in my case all the commit will upload but the interesting thing is you are mentioning master branch okay it means the entire master branch upload but technically you know what they do behind the scene they, they use this reference called hat so wherever you're pointing to okay current right now wherever your pointer is means whichever you guys are working on pointer means your head is one special variable and head is pointing to commit three or version three. So technically, we know in the master branch, we are at commit three. So whenever you push anything, okay, or you transfer your data from one branch to other branch also, the same thing, because right now in the master branch, so when you upload also here, this called push. Technically, this is also one kind of branch, you can say, the way you create a dev local branch or other feature branches, right? So in simple term, if you are doing any operations, almost any operations, right, in your commit area, that operation will always check where your head is. And wherever your head is, uh, whichever the commit they are referencing to, they connecting to you, uh, to you, they know till this commit. It is something like this, V3 is a, uh, let me write in this way. First, we create V1, then V2, then V3. Okay, so my head is the one who know I'm here. Okay, so whatever uh, you want to do, they will do in this area. But this area has this parent, this area has this parent. It means head is one variable they know about this entire data. So my, my, you know, my point here is there's a lot of scenario come up, okay, where my local developers, right? My local developers, not branch, normal developers who uh, commit something uh, on uh, C3. This a V3 actually commit created. But why after creating, they might not be very sure uh, that this commit what I created, I save locally is ready to go and upload in the GitHub. Because as you upload in the GitHub, I told you in my last class, normally we have a DevOps, Jenkins is going on. And as soon as the commit in the GitHub, Jenkins will pick this data and deploy in the production system. So maybe they want to commit locally, locally, but they also want as soon as a comment locally, I don't want this data to be uploaded, sorry, in the, in the GitHub. Okay, and what are the commit? Uh, whatever normally we do in the commit area, any operations, there will be much more operations. I don't want to do anything right now in this area. Okay, my requirement is I want to provide my data till commit two. Even the commit, I, didn't, I did commit it three or version three, but I would like to only provide my commit two or data till my commit two in my commit area. So my point here is guys, is that it's just a game of the head uh, uh, pointer. Okay, so when you upload something, you create a branch to put the commit area or timeline to a new branch, your head can decide till what point you will provide your data for any operations in the future or for the commit area. So my point here is you can switch your head pointer to any of the, any of the commit area. You can shift either head here, you can shift either head here, you can uh, take it forward. So backward, forward, reverse, rewind, all things you can do. And by, by shifting your head pointer here and there, lots of powerful capabilities you can generate. What are those? That was the, what, a lot of use case I'm going to discuss right now. Uh, but, but my point here is wherever your head variable is pointing or giving having the reference of particular the version or the commit area on this data, all right? Until this data, your Git related commands mostly work. 
one of the simple example is git push command so when now if i do git push even though in my master branch we have three commits but when i do git push my data will push till here okay they skip this part they have no visibility i can say only they will push uh, uh, till till here okay and much more kind of things right so when i do practical i keep on showing you but just just wanted to uh, give this information to you head pointer is very much critical and a lot of, lot of capabilities also they provide what are those i will discuss today so what i'm going to do again i go to git git bash just start to showing you these spectacles and keep on adding multiple things uh, as different different use case so this is git bash we have discussed in the last class but today guys i want to because there's lots of advanced spectacle is going to come up so if, if if you really want to understand what is going on behind the scene this for example this is one of the simple example i was talking about so i'm going to show you one very powerful visual tool who help us to learn the concept very clearly right so if you go to github of my account okay this is my account all right this copyable linux world slash 13 and here there's a one repository known as vid uh, known as uh, what about it? there's one repository with which what what is the name i have given that point in time Right. Uh, is I forgot the name. So let me let me search in the other way. So there is a uh, one powerful tool. Let me search Vimal Linux World thirteen. Okay, and uh, over here, right. Is is there the google okay so let me let me quickly write uh, show you another way so there's one uh, powerful tool in the github is called git which i think i was writing the wrong spelling yeah here it is so this one so this is one very powerful tool known as git viz this is the url uh, we have if you can somehow send this url to you i'm putting guys in the chat box to for everyone this is the url in the chat box i put here in the zoom meeting so if you go to this particular uh, url this is a very powerful tool to be, to create a lot of visuals all right and here uh, uh, here in this particular uh, tool you can download this software and after download you can install it and use it how so they give you one link this is the one link they give you release where i get this software binary to download just click in this link click in this link and there's option here to download the zip right of the latest version so i click on the zip and download that's all Okay, after download is a like a, uh, a clickable just click and uh, like it's called executable just click and use it okay so the zip file click here it will ask you to do you want to extract if this is a archive i say yes i want to extract this guy uh, where to ex extract you can extract this particular uh, software yeah that's all so it, it, in my case, it extends in the, in the download folder. And if I go to my uh, download folder, so this is the folder they created. This is the folder they have. And there are multiple files we have, but this is the applications that I'm looking for. So Git Viz is a very interesting application. It is a good way to learn uh, the Git concept on the real time. So when you click, double click, this is a verify get uh, get viz uh, come up. That's all. Okay, how to use this? What is the power of this? Let me show you. So here they're asking you, can you tell me your local repo? Means your local Git repo 
All right, so I can create some visuals for you. So what I'm going to do, I'll go to my Git bash. Okay, let me go to my documents folder. And in the last class, we have created Git, um, I think Git training folder. I think this folder we have created in the last class, no. So, Git uh, workforce, maybe workspace, whatever name we have given in the last class. Maybe this one, doesn't matter, right? So this is one folder we have, uh, we was working maybe on in the last class. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a one more new uh, work space or this called local repository that I'm going to initialize. And let's say this will be my workspace 11. Okay, so new workspace I am created. In this workspace, we have no nothing to commit because this work is entirely empty. Okay. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to put one file, let's say a.txt. Okay, if now I run the get status command, they say one file we added, but it's untracked. Okay, so I say, let me add this file, a.txt. Now this file is being tracked. Tracked, it is there in the staging area. In the staging area, new file come up, but it is not still exists in my commit area. The only tracking that is there in the staging area. So you guys know how to commit. So I can I want to commit this file with a command called as a commit number one. So commit number one, we have created here. Now this, this entire data uh, stored and now my local branch master branch is clear. And then the get logs command, these are the guys commands we have discussed multiple times in the last classes. So this is the first commit with commit ID created with this message. Okay, so in my master branch, I have one commit that we can see with the log one line command also. But to see this thing very clearly with visuals, what I'm going to do. So my workspace WS1 is there in this folder in my documents folder. So I'll go to my get viz and there's option here to browse. So I go to my documents in the document. I'll go to get work workshop right and this particular uh, ws11 i'm picking and as soon as i click okay what they do this tool will pick this and this try to show you in this kind of visuals that is very handy in one way what i mean by this let me it. okay so let me show you in this way right so technically what happened, as soon as I do something, they keep on highlighting, up, updating it, this uh, visual tools that, that makes uh, life simple in the terms of learning and understanding, right? So when I say this, uh, get log one line. Okay, so it is very clear. We have one command called 871, the same thing they're talking about 871. And because the last commit, and this commit is the part of my timeline, okay? And where is my timeline? Timeline means the master branch. Okay, in the master branch, all the comment, what they, you have, they show you. That's what they're talking about. So you have the master branch. Okay, the master branch. This is a part of master branch. But because this is the last comment we have done, so head is pointing to uh, this particular, uh, this particular branch. It's not this particular branch. Head is also pointing to this commit ID. I explained to you, I explained to you already, we can change our height pointer here and there. What is use of this? We will discuss in some practical. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, create some more file, let's say b.txt and uh, let me add this file. Okay, and now if I do commit again one more time, you'll see some live difference gonna come up. This is the commit number two. And as you're committed, one more thing come on this branch. One more commit ID eight four and because eight four three five is the last one, so my head is pointing to eight four uh, three five uh, three five right now. Even though we can see where the logs come out also, so eight four three five they are pointing uh, to right now. And let me do one more time very quickly. 
so we have big uh, history guys right? this is normally also known as known as history so history of math commit so we have a big history over here okay uh, add in the staging area and then i want to commit this thing let's say this commit number three <coughs> uh, sorry is a uh, c so commit three uh, we have done right so this is a history we have created the main thing is head is pointing uh, to this guy and the important point is wherever the head is pointing okay and now in this commit area this is the commit history of my commit area any operation that you perform is performed based on the head where the head is point what i mean by this let's say i want to create a branch right what is a branch you guys know i want to create a new timeline okay or a new branch so let's say get a branch uh, dev one okay whether well, we can use this command also get checkout okay b so this will create a new branch dev one plus also take you there what branch it create okay whatever the data you have guys in your master branch we were creating the branch for the master so whatever the data you have in the master branch in the commit area we have three versions v3 v2 v1 and because head is pointing to v3 okay that is a reason whenever we create a new branch or new timeline all right this entire version v1 v2 v3 will come up here it looked like they come up here but it, they, they are just creating a connections or the references but everything come up here till v3 but why till v3 because my head is pointing to v3 so when you create a new branch let me show you very quickly when a new branch created with this visual tool okay you choose the new branch you on the dev one branch but what you are seeing dev one is also pointing to this one and because right now you are into dev one branch so you now head is only one single pointer they are now pointing to this branch so the head is a part of your dev one branch that head says that where you are working which branch you are working and this was in, in this branch which uh, pointer or which particular uh, commit id you are pointing to okay so we can visualize in this way so now my head pointer is here okay in this branch not here and in this branch they're pointing to v3 by chance both the guys are same so there's no meaning to have a copy so internally they look like they have also have uh, they also have you know this commit history but technically they are same this one is the same exactly what you have in the master okay what you have the master they are the same the one thing so this thing you guys know in the last class we discussed right but but the main thing i would like to uh, show you with the first quick practical is just a game of the head uh, branch so what i mean by this what i mean by this if i go back let me check out to the master okay so i am i would like to go to master now head if you see guys here in the visual head is now part of the master branch and which the last commit is head is pointing to that particular commit okay just quickly let me delete my branch because i want to create one more new branch i don't want any confusion here so so let me delete the branch called dev one i don't need right now now this branch deleted now we have only one single branch called master okay and now what i'm doing here uh, i want to create again one more branch but by default behavior is normally when we get the branch entire data of this branch come to a new branch but let's say we have some scenario and uh, uh, scenario would be uh, something like this even though guys i want to show you one more quick thing before we go ahead as a quick reason so we can compare also right so so for the comparison what i'm doing i'm creating again one more branch that i show you in the last class let's say dev one again let's say this is my feature branch why create it because this guy have a requirement uh, they would like to add some more data some more code some more feature let's say d1.txt file this guy's created uh, in this branch they added in the staging area this file and they committed from their particular branch so as soon as you kind of committed for a number let's say from dev one branch okay sorry 
file number is called D1. Commit. And now we can see your day one branch is one commit ahead. Your master is still pointing to E C2, the last third one. And now day one is pointing to 479. You can see from log scan also. So some of my developer take the copy from the master branch and start working uh, on the next part or next feature that's called feature. I explained this concept too in the last class. So this four seven this dev is, is one ahead of the commit of the master branch. And because right now we are working on the dev one branch, so my head pointer, that is very important pointer, we keep on using this pointer multiple times, is pointing to this branch with this commit. Okay. Let me do one more thing, one more time. Let's write d2.txt, creating a new file with the touch command. Same thing I'm doing here, add this file and commit this file, commit this file with fit. Okay, so they have, my dev branch is two uh, history or two commit ahead. And let's say this guy say my, my job is done. So, so what are uh, things I change is we can merge into the master. What is merge you guys know. So for this, I'll go and check out my master branch or insert check out. What can you do? Uh, it is something like this is before the dev one branch, you was in the master branch. So you can use switch command also. And there's option called hyphen. So anybody who know about Linux command, in Linux, we have CD command and CD we have hyphen option. So CD command in Linux means change directory. Hyphen means in the CD command in Linux means whichever directory you was previous previously, just history means previous previous folder, take me there. Okay, same thing, hyphen have the same meaning here in the git. What they do, wherever you was in the last time before the one branch, you might be in the dev two, at dev three, but wherever you was, take me there, okay? So because you was in the master branch, you take you, this guy will take you to the master branch. So you can quickly switching the thing uh, back and previous by this option. Rather than memorize the name, because sometimes name of the branch is very bigger, uh, sometime, and most of the cases I can say. Uh, so having this option uh, will, will help you. Now, if you see guys, head branch, is, head pointer is pointing to master branch of the latest commit. But dev one is again, two uh, words ahead. So I can say, I can say merge and with the dev one. So I'm in the master branch. What are two things they have done in the dev one branch? I want to merge in the master. Before I merge, I can, you can see in the master branch, only three files we have, but as you merge of dev one, that's what I saw in my last class also. What they do, they do the merging, okay, very quickly. And these two files, whatever you had it, now it is a part of my master branch also. See, same 0D force already come on the top of this. And this kind of merging is called merging strategy. And here they're using the stage called FF, which is called fast forward strategy. Okay, but in this case, you get, because, you know, in the master branch, you, you stop there, you're not working forward in the master, your feature branch, day one branch is keep on adding multiple things and they merge back. Okay, so this kind of scenario I show you in my last class also, very simple scenario, uh, but sometimes useful. But in this scenario, if you want to merge, then this called fast forward merging. We have some more merging we'll discuss right now when as you progress in this topic. Okay, and after we merge, uh, we don't need anything in the dev one branch, the, the feature branch job done. So mostly we normally deal with this branch. So I don't need dev one branch more. Because what the purpose of the dev one branch is done, is done. So I can build this guy also. The main branch is a master. We can keep on working on the master uh, as a forward, right? So this is one thing. So guys, I'm just doing multiple things together, right? I'm showing you what is happening with this visuals, plus also revising some of the older concepts. So what we discussed in the last classes, plus keep on adding some new options also here. Plus, I'm also building the lab for my next practical. So multiple things I'm doing uh, right now over here. Now, uh, what I was talking about. So head is pointing to 0D42. As soon as I create a branch, okay, entire data 
of this branch, we go to new branch. Okay, why entire data? Because head is pointing to geo two, geo d four two. Okay, but what can you do? There's option called get checkout. Okay, even though if I run the get logs command also, one line, one line. So my head is pointing to zero d four two, but we can change my head pointer. Right now we have this entire data come up in the master branch, but I want to say my get that there's a one per ID I want to go at this point in time. Okay, so what data I had at this point in time because every command ID has the time also the commit uh, comments also. So we know what we had at this point in time. Maybe we have done multiple things here, but something is not working, is crashing. Uh, so our plan is, you know, let me explain the plan, right? This makes more sense. So, yeah. so these are the things we have, and we reach here, but after we reach here, we found uh, something uh, very something back we have done something that is, is causing the error or maybe at this point in time we write a code this code is been uh, written in such a way that this code is connecting to some of my databases and databases might not work fine so to change the url of the database of connectivity or something so it will be anything or maybe at this point of time we run a function that function has some challenges Thing is not working maybe they are running till here but they made some version change happen because the version change some of the uh, keyword of properties is not working the way we want it will be anything so i want to go here and fix this issue so for this right now your head is here normally guys normally to fixing the issue we always get a feature branch is good practice i can say uh, it good practice never directly work on the master branch to fixing some issues or adding some new feature also we can do it right but it's not good practice so head is pointing here so but I, what i want i want to create a new branch called dev one to fix my issue or well, let's say i give the branch and go fix branch all right of my database for example and what i want in this branch i don't want to have this entire data i want what are data i had at this point in time so this copy or this point in time data I want to put in this branch. But how it will work? We have to first create the branch. But when you create the branch, entire timeline come up. But I don't want this. So I have to first shift my head pointer here. Head pointer here. Okay. And after the head pointer come at this time or this point in time, then we can ask to create a new branch. And now when the new branch come up, this head pointer where the pointing to this data will go uh, to this branch and obviously this branch parent is this one so their parent always goes so this entire history or this part of the history or sub history they will go there or maybe you can think in the gate everything is arranged the way you guys see multiple time in the tree way so this sub tree okay so the entire sub tree will go to this particular branch so whatever you want to understand you can understand so let me show you how it works. So let me first, you for this, you have to change your pointer of the head. So that is, so for this, there's one of the way, the other way also for other different kind of use cases, but checkout is one of the way. I'm asking checkout to take my head pointer to 8435. Okay, even though before I do so, let me show you my history is clean right uh, there is nothing to commit everything is clean right and these are the five files we have here okay and this is the history of our log now you check out command and putting this uh, sorry you get commit putting this number 8435 not commit sorry check out So when I do so, uh, you will see this visual is very powerful, uh, very limited time we see this kind of options, right? The master is pointing to something else, head is pointing to something else. This is what you see. And this is a very special case or state, okay? 
where hand is pointing in this timeline something previous something back okay this state is known as details head state so we detach the head from actual pointing where master is pointing to and we take this head somewhere else so now head is pointing to 8435 this is what i was um, explaining to you right the now head is pointing to this particular pointer okay and because head is pointing to this particular pointer so what happened uh, what happened uh, now if uh, the even multiple guys option they also give you we'll we'll discuss what commands they now if i run the logs command you can see now in the logs had is pointing this guy it doesn't mean your entire history removed or whatever data you had at this point in time that data will show you here okay and at the same time now if i do git git check out okay and creating new branch let's say i have some bug so the bug fix branch i'm creating here bug fix branch by dev one developer so this branch i am creating so what happened because head is pointing to this one so this bug fix dev one branch again is pointing this guy okay and if i do ls whatever data we had at this point in time the data is only visible to this guy that two five or maybe this file two five has some kind of code so that code and that point of kind of data that point in time data will be visible to this particular developer and now this developer start working on this they start working on this and uh, let's say they create some more new file or maybe they edit the file whatever we have so let's say they create b1.txt file uh, right to fixing this bug or adding the code also in the file and after this they will add this file in the staging area they commit this file uh in that commit area let's say b1 or has one for example so new uh def because obviously they change something and after change they have to store in the commit area so that's what they have done but let me do one more time touch uh, b2 bug again they fix this new file they create or they added something in the file then they put in the staging area of the data or the file and then they also again Commit. We do. Commit, right? So this is done. So you guys can see this look like a tree. Okay. So from here we start start, then we have a two. Okay, this is called diversion in the tree. Now we have two diversion. Okay, master branch has a different timeline. Uh, bug fix branch has a different timeline. Some is we have a common thing in between. Okay. Common thing in between. And uh, and something like this, okay. Uh, but now after they do bug fixes, now it's time to again because they uh, one branch or bug fix branch has added two things, added two features. They might test it. Thing is working fine. So whatever change they have done, I want to merge back to the master. Okay. So how can we do? So for this, we have to first go to the master check out master command just check out guys has two possibility check out will tell you take you to the different branch also plus they take you at that point in time also of the commit id so now in the master if you see the log one line in the master we have again this five commits that's what we had the well, last time they're showing only two because we changed the head but when we again shift to the master he had is automatic reset to the top where the master is pointing to now in this example what i want to tell you okay one of the bug is fixes but their one branch is not come up here because they create two files the two, those two files doesn't come up here because we haven't merged it we have a merge right so what we have to do technically technically it is very interesting concept in merging the last merge that i showed to you okay that that tree is a little bit different right so the last merge they are showed to you we have a first version then second version v1 v2 then v3 my master is pointing till here 
Then we create new branch, dev one branch, for example. Then this guy is created, uh, is created v4 on the top of this. Then they created v5 on the top of this. So this data we create in dev one, and this data is still we have in the master. Now what we had done, we have to just add this data on the top of this. Let's go merge. Okay, so adding a data that is already there, a continuity on the top of this, not big, big issue. So the merging that we have seen multiple time till now, okay, is something what they're doing. They are just adding the data on the top of master. So what data we added in the dev one, same data that they're adding exactly the pick and put on the top of the master. Okay, and adding is so simple. Why? Because master know uh, where you're pointing to. Okay, master know the last commit. Okay, and whatever they have the extra differential, they will add on the top of this. That is the reason this called fast forward merge. But here the scenario is very different. If you compare, here the scenario is a little bit different. The scenario would be, okay, whatever the commit we have done is not on the top of my last commit of the master. Okay, this fee changes whatever we have done this is the first change we have done this is the next change we have done in my dev one or bug fix branch okay the those changes are on the top of this guy okay not on the top of my last commit on where the master and head is pointing technically okay this change we have done in some of my other commit area let's say let me give this commit boxes a name node so let's say there's a node so there's a node one node two, okay, node three, node four, node five, or maybe we can give the version one, version two, version three, and let's say this is 10 or this is 11, okay? So if you if you are at the uh, fifth node, and on the top of this, if you create a new branch and add six out there, then adding on the top of this, it would be like this kind of scenario that we have seen today and last class also. A merging would be then not big deal, we can, very simply, logically, that merge will done this go fast forward. But here, merging is not so simple. Why? We have to first go back. Does my branch that I create a feature branch, they will start from here? No. We'll go back. Does they start from here? No. We'll go back. They start from here? No. We'll go back. We we'll start from here? Yes. First, we have to go back in my history, keep on checking, and then we have to check the difference here, what difference they have added, what are the name commit they given to you. They pick this details and then they have to add on the top of this. Okay, so as a programming, those who know any programming or a concept of DSA, uh, data structure algorithms, if you know, then this is mostly look like a recursion, a recursion concept. We check here, no, we go back, we go back, we go back and then we again come up and add this guy on the top of this. Right. So again, we are not in DSA classes, but it more look like recursion. Okay. So what I mean by this, let me show you with practical. So technically, this is the information we have in the master branch. Right now, we are in the master branch. Right. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to merge. Okay. My bug fix branch. Okay in the master and if you notice guys in the master la last commit is 0d okay and my bug fix last commit is da and 5d so when i do this merging okay this time guys while merging they open my by default text editor in your case maybe they open vi and uh, uh, maybe something like this and they're asking you merging so can you pass some uh, merge message here why are merging so for the future reference so in this merging uh, they have to use some specialized concept let me also explain what they're going to do in this kind of merging what what they are going to do behind the scene okay in this merging they pick this data okay on the top of master and create a new commit okay let me show you and because they're creating, creating a new commit that is the reason they are asking to give some commit message. Okay, so let's say my commit message is um, merging bug 
fix into master okay and bug fix of uh, two days back or three days ago something so some message on bug fixes we have long back somebody had done this other developer had done this i go to the rate time and i fuck, uh, fix the bug <coughs> of that particular point in time okay and i close so this is one commit message we have put all right and i say okay so now guys you will some see some difference here very interesting tree they created okay and now what you are seeing uh, whatever data you have in d a and 5b in the bug fix branch they take this two uh, this two uh, you know d a and 5b of my bug fix branch commit they take this both uh, both uh, commits in this comment, we have created two files or maybe some more data in this or change some other data also other files. We take everything and send this entire data and merge the entire data in my master branch. Okay. With a new commit, this go A2. So last time guys, I had OD. If I show you here, last time I had OD. Last one, but this entire data, they store in a new commit in the master. Okay. New commit the master, and this is a good strategy actually. Maybe, uh, maybe this data, if they add on the top of the master, might not work the way we want it. So, that is one of the reasons they take this entire data and put in the different commit ID. Oh, sorry, commit ID. Why they put in the different commit ID? Maybe this might not work, so we can remove this commit ID, last commit history ID, and again, it's still working till here. So, maybe other benefit also you get. Okay, you will uh, see here. But this is what they, they create behind the scene. Okay. Behind the scene. And now if you do LS, if you do LS here, you will see the entire data come in the master bar. You know, these two things we have changed there come here. But this kind of strategy, guys, is known as because they go until they work with the concept of recursion. So this strategy of merging is known as recursion strategy. Or recursive strategy. It's called recursive merging strategy. Okay, but recursive merging strategy is a little bit older. They have some small small bugs. Okay, to for, uh, to fix the bug. To fix the bug, all right. They give one in, after fixing the bug. They give this recursive strategy a different name. It is recursive only, but they have some small small things. They changes. One thing they changes is. Uh, previously what we, we used to do we take this data and add on the top of this okay something like this we are we was doing previously right but instead nowadays what they do uh, right now guys we are using git version 2 with some 2 point some version right so in the updated version of the git what they have done now in the recursive they take this data rather than they copy this entire data okay they will take this data and put this entire data in the new version and new commit Okay, and new commit uh, ID they created, new version they created. That will give a lot of benefit in the terms of management. Okay, so that is the reason, guys. Nowadays, in the latest version of Git, mostly we don't use recursive. Instead of recursive, we have some advanced version of recursive that is called uh, that's called ORT strategy. So whenever you see ORT strategy, it is like the concept I explained to you. It is more like a recursive. Or this advanced version of recursive that where they added some extra benefit and features on the top of recursive, right? So, so technically you don't have to worry about Git will take care of all those concepts to you, right? But they are trying to tell you what strategy they are using behind the scene. So this is the example of ORT, or I can say the recursive strategy. What they're doing here, okay? So this is a uh, one thing uh, to note here. And after this, <clears throat> you think your bug fix, uh, your branch work done. So you can use get branch to delete this particular branch. Now branch is deleted. Now your history is, is clear. That branch has been deleted. Okay. But still we have this data. Maybe because this, this is pointing to this one. So that's what they come up here. So we have this branch diversion, right? So we'll, we'll fix this if you want, but this is what uh, they have created. Okay, so this is one 
I'm just trying to show you multiple different different use cases. I don't know which use case gonna help you, but almost every use case, guys, depend upon the area to area or to comment to comment, help you. Okay. So branching is a very common thing. Merging is a very common thing. Depend upon the use case and the requirement, we have to use that particular things. That's one, right? Now, this is one small topic done. We keep on adding multiple topic as we progress. More, much more concepts you're gonna see in in the upcoming discussion over here. So this is one concept of merging and with some extra strategy. We have done plus the important point here, here is I would like to explain you this graphical tool and I would also want to explain the meaning of the head or I would like to also explain you the meaning of checkout also. So these are the things guys I want to tell you that's what I cover here.